Now, the Thai news agency reporter Pan Wong Shi Um had the chance to conduct an exclusive interview with Dr. Surin Pitsuwan, the Secretary General of ASEAN, at the 18th ASEAN Summit in Jakarta, Indonesia. The interview touched on a number of issues, ranging from the Thai Cambodian border conflict, the prospect of Myanmar's chairmanship of ASEAN in the year 2014, ASEAN's connectivity master plan, and people centered ASEAN. We have all the details in this special interview. Swadikap, thank you for giving us this interview. Our first question to you: the Thai-Cambodian border the situation. What's the latest development there? Well, uh, both sides have expressed uh, their uh, positions to the summit, and uh, I think the leaders have taken note of their positions. And uh, I understand that they will try to meet at some point during the summit. And um, all ASEAN uh, member states would like to see this issue resolved, uh, you know, amicably, uh, bilaterally if possible, and um, uh, as, 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 quick as, pos as quickly as possible. Uh, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be resolved too fast, but as long as it can be contained, as long as uh, it can uh, be kept uh, uh, rather quiet and no outbursts, no clashes, no violence, no loss of lives or property, then it would be okay. For, for a long while, since the meeting of the foreign ministers on the 22nd of, of February, uh, it was rather calm and uh, peaceful, and we were all uh, uh, quite uh, encouraged by that. But then all of a sudden, at the end of April, you know, there was a series of, of clashes that uh, certainly had uh, worried uh, not only us in ASEAN, but also in, in the global community as a whole, because the issue had had been referred to the UN, and the UN referred back to ASEAN, and therefore it's a common responsibility now for us to make sure that we can contain the, the situation. And so far it's been looking, uh, things are looking better? Uh, from the, uh, the meeting this I, th I think uh, that there is a willingness to talk, to uh, exchange views, to listen to each other's positions and all the ASEAN leaders can do is to encourage that yes sit down uh, you know talk it over and see if there are some uh, common ground that, that uh, both sides can meet and then uh, and explore and expand that common ground further rather than dwelling on uh, the very very uh, emotional issues and differences but I think we have to start somewhere yeah. On the issue of Myanmar chairmanship of ASEAN in the year 2014, what's, has it been discussed at the summit? At the foreign minister's level, it has been discussed, uh, but there's no definite conclusion. And I understand that the Myanmar government has uh, uh, responded to the idea of inviting the chair of the uh, foreign ministers meeting, uh, which means the foreign minister of Indonesia, uh, to visit in order to understand the situation firsthand, and uh, the foreign minister or foreign secretary of the Philippines has volunteered to come along. Uh, so I think uh, that is a good uh, mechanism to uh, uh, assure the leaders that uh, the situation is, uh, you know, uh, appropriate uh, for them to make a decision. Uh, uh, I don't think it is appropriate until that is fulfilled, uh, the invitation to go in, but the dates that were offered were uh, in conflict with the schedule of the chair. So the chair has not been able to fulfill that mandate. So I, I think until that process is over, uh, the decision uh, will, will have to uh, put on hold and, and see what, what the development is. Yeah. 
Does it bode well then for ASEAN, you think, that issues such as Myanmar transition to democracy or the lack of it is being openly discussed? This is a, a turning point of ASEAN. You know, it, these kind of issues used to be extremely sensitive and uh, out of bound that you would not discuss, you would not raise the issues internal to a member state or uh, bilateral to any two member states. Um, but things seem to be developing very well. That they are willing to discuss, willing to listen, and willing to exchange ideas on these things. That, I think, is maturity of ASEAN. Yeah. Following up on last year, um, implementation and plans, the ASEAN Connectivity Master Plan. Um, what, else, what are some of the new developments there? The committee to implement the master plan uh, of ASEAN connectivity has been set up and they have met. And uh, they certainly will look into the details uh, project by project and uh, will uh, engage the dialogue partners or the um, private sector outside because uh, there is no uh, foreign aid to uh, uh, develop infrastructure anymore. That time is gone. Now it has to be a commercial venture. It has to be based on a, a profit investment uh, on uh, a market uh, demand that if there is an opportunity for investment and there is uh, an investor, entrepreneurs willing to invest, uh, or even uh, what they call public-private partnership, PPP, uh, the government and the private sector from uh, outside or from inside would like to come and participate for a duration and they will make their money, make their profit. Uh, I would say these projects will have to be mar marketable, will have to be bankable, and will have to be commercially viable. And uh, the, the member states will have to learn to speak the language of the market. It is not the language of foreign aid anymore. How do you make ASEAN more people-centered as an organization, as an association, or as a community even? Well, I mean, the, the charter says it has to be a people-centered organization. And the leadership this year, Indonesia is certainly making an effort. When Thailand was in the chair, it's also ASEAN for the people. Uh, so you see the evolution. And uh, you see that uh, people will have more and more opportunities, space, forum, process, for them to come in and make a contribution. It will have to be participated by, and the ownership has to be felt by the people. Uh, otherwise, it won't be a solid organization. Uh, it is no longer the mission of the leaders, of the diplomats, of the ministers, or even of officials. Uh, it's now a common journey of all 600 million people on this road to the community. We will achieve uh, uh, by 2015 uh, what we have set out to do. But again, consider that as a work in progress. There is not going to be a deadline that everything is done, finished, no more room for improvement, for progress. That's not true. The EU is going through the same process, the same journey. We will do the same thing. And that is uh, perfecting our organization, our community as we go along. Right now we are looking at the year 2022 not 2015 anymore, beyond 2015. And that was an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with the Secretary General of ASEAN. With that, we'll pause for a short break and more news after that.